Welcome back to our lecture series, Math 1060, Trigonometry for Students at Southern Utah University. As usual, I'll be your professor today, Dr. Andrew Misseldine. In lecture 30, we're going to continue to talk about vectors, and in section 9.3, we're going to talk about the algebraic representation of vectors. Now, I don't usually draw much attention to the really obscure and goofy titles to our lectures here, but I figure since it's named after me, I should probably say something about this. Uh, you might have remembered in lecture 28 when we started this this topic of vector discussion it was referred to as robin hood's favorite section well that one kind of makes sense i mean most of the jokes in this lecture series are completely obscure and no one gets them except for me uh but that one that one makes sense vectors are arrows robin hood is a famous archer and such well what does this one have to do with anything well it turns out that Vectors, the topics of vectors, is really the introduction to a broader topic of mathematics, a broader discipline of mathematics referred to as linear algebra. Uh, and with regard to the lectures I have posted here, uh, the, my linear algebra lecture series is in fact the flagship of them all, um, as it's based upon my own textbook about uh, linear algebra. It's called Linear Algebra Done Openly. And so let's just say I have a great, great passion for vectors, especially the algebraic representation of vectors. And I think you're going to see that in this lecture and in the, the subsequent videos for this lecture as well. What is so cool about the algebraic representation? Well, it turns out that while vectors are naturally defined in a trigonometric setting, as we've learned previously in this lecture series, that there's a difference between algebra and trigonometry. Trigonometry does some things better than algebra, but algebra does some things better than trigonometry. And it turns out when it comes to vectors, even though it makes sense to define them trigonometrically, when it comes to actually doing algebra with them, it makes sense to do this algebraically. And we're going to start to see this in this video, like in this lecture. So what is the algebraic representation of a vector? Well, let V be some vector, right? And let's put this vector in standard position. Remember, the location of a vector in the plane doesn't make any difference on the vector's value itself. It doesn't change the vector quantity. So standard positions, when we put the tail of the vector, think of it as an arrow, um, at the origin, so at the point zero, zero. Well, and you can see that illustrated in this diagram right here. Well, if the vector is put into standard position, its tail is on the origin, where is the head of the vector pointing to? Well, there's going to be some unique point in the plane when you're in standard position. Um, let's call that point A comma B. A is the x-coordinate, B is the y-coordinate. Um, in which case then, this point's uniquely determined by the vector. If we took a different vector, it would be pointing to a different point. Um, different vectors give us different points in the plane, right? And so we could characterize the vector by using this point. And this leads to the algebraic form of the vector. So we'll say V is equal to bracket, angle bracket A comma B, angle bracket here. We're using these little brackets here uh, to distinguish it between the point, because we're not talking about the point in space, we're talking about the vector. So it's the arrow that's pointing to that point. Now, these numbers A and B are not just some arbitrary points, not arbitrary numbers in the plane. This is actually, these are the components of the vector V. And so the algebraic form is sometimes called the component form. Uh, that is to say, the horizontal component of V is just this number A. And the vertical component of, of V is just this number B. And we can see this from the usual Pythagorean equation, because we, after all, the horizontal and vertical, they form a right angle with each other. They're perpendicular. And so think about the coordinate A, right? This is the shadow cast on the x-axis. That's what this number A is. And B is the other way around, too. It's, it's this vertical component. How far up the, how far up the y-axis do you go? That gives you B. So these two numbers, again, are not just arbitrary numbers that V just so happens to be pointing to. These are the components of the vector. And therefore, the translation we had previously, um, the conversion formulas we have, are applicable when we go from the geometric to the algebraic representation. So for example, because these three numbers, the magnitude of, well, I mean, A is the magnitude of the horizontal component. So this number A, this number B, and the magnitude of V, they form a right triangle. So these three numbers are related to each other by the Pythagorean equation. A squared plus B squared equals the magnitude of V squared. Or if you solve for the magnitude of V, you get this is equal to the square root of A squared plus B squared. Um, similarly, um, if we think of theta as the angle between the positive x-axis 
and the vector, which is an arrow itself, um, this theta represents the direction of the vector. Well then, if you take opposite over adjacent, there's a tangent re relationship between uh, the angle and these components, tangent theta equals B over A, or you could take arc tangent of both sides as well. And it goes the other way, it goes the other way, of course, too, that A is just equal to the magnitude of V times cosine of theta, and B is equal to the magnitude of V times sine of theta. So we can convert back and forth between the geometric and algebraic forms of a vector using these trigonometric formulas. All right, so let's do a quick example of this. If we take the vector three comma negative four, uh, what does that mean? It means that we're gonna draw the arrow that points to three negative four. X coordinate is three, Y coordinate is negative four. You see a vector uh, in the fourth quadrant right there. How do we find its magnitude? Well, that's easy enough. The magnitude V is gonna equal the square root of three squared plus negative four squared. Three squared is nine, negative four squared is 16, 9 plus 16 is 25, and we have our favorite Pythagorean triple. We see that the magnitude of our vector v here would be 5. And so conversion from the algebraic form to the geometric or the geometric to algebraic form of a vector is just these basic SOHCAHTOA right triangle trigonometric relationships. All right, so why do we care about the algebraic form? I said earlier, it makes things easier. Get to that point. All right, I'll get to that. So previously we talked about the idea of vector addition. We can add arrows together, and this makes sense that these arrows represent forces or displacement or velocity and things like that. Uh, the way you add together vectors uh, geometrically is by the parallelogram rule, which you see a picture of such a thing down here. We have some vector u, we have some vector v, and so you can add them together so that the sum u plus v is the diagonal of this parallelogram diagram. Okay, that's how you do it geometrically, but how do you do it algebraically? It turns out it's so, so, so much easier to do this algebraically. If you want to add together u plus v, take their algebraic forms. So u has some algebraic forms, so it has a horizontal and a vertical component, call that ux, ui, very clever mnemonic device there. And then v also has an algebraic form, call its horizontal component ux and its, uh, excuse me, vx and call its vertical component vy. How do you add together the vectors? Well, you're just going to add together their horizontal components. You're going to take ux plus vx, that's, it'll be the, that'll be the horizontal component there. And then how do you add together its vertical component? We'll take UY plus VY, and that's its vertical component. So you just add together basically like terms. You add together the corresponding components, and that's how you add the vectors together. So let's see an example of this. Let's say U is equal to 6, 2, and V is equal to negative, th negative 3, 5. How do you add them together? Well, it's easy enough. You'll add together the horizontal components, 6 minus 3, add together the vertical components, 2 plus 5, and you end up with 6 minus 3 is 3, and 2 plus 5 is 7. And so the sum of the two vectors will be 3, 7, which if you draw these vectors in standard position like you see in this diagram, u is 6, 2. So it's going to be the vector that goes to, it's going to point to the point 6, 2, x is 6, and y is 2. Now we can draw V in standard position as well, right? This is going to be the vector that points to the point negative 3, 5, like you see right here. But to make life a little bit easier, I'm going to translate it over here, right? And so this is going to be the vector that goes to the left by 3 and goes up by 5. And so think about that for a second. If we go to the left by 3, 1, 2, 3, and we go up by 5, 1, 2, 3, 4. 4, 5, we end up at the point 3, 7, and that justifies why we add these things together. And so algebraically, we just add or subtract the corresponding components, and that gives us the vector sum. That's a lot easier than this parallelogram rule for sure. Let's introduce another operation for vectors that's very common that we've alluded to in the, in the past, but never done it explicitly. The idea of scalar multiplication. We can multiply a vector by a scalar, and multiplying a vector by a scalar, what it does is it just multiplies each of the components of the vector by that scalar. So for example, if you take v equals 3, 2, then what's 3v? 3v just means that you're going to times 3 by the components of the vector. So you're going to end up with 3 times 3, and 3 times 2. 
So you end up with nine comma six, like so. And so in this diagram, you see the, the two vectors in play here. They're both in standard position. There's vector V right here. Uh, v was three, two, right? So it goes three to the, to the right and then two up like so. 3v, by the formula, you're going to get 9, 6. So you're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 to the right. And you're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 upward like so. And so 3v is this vector right here. Now, when you look at 3v, it goes in the exact same direction as v. The direction didn't change. This angle is still theta, whether you're talking about v or 3v. But the magnitude's definitely bigger. In fact, the arrow looks three times as long as we started off with. And this is what scalar multiplication does. Um, scalar multiplication will stretch or compress the length of the vector depending if the scalar is large or small. Um, so timesing v by three made it get three times longer. If I times v by one half, it would cut the magnitude in one half keeping the same direction. If your scalar is negative, then scalar multiplication will flip it to the other direction. So like V of times negative one would give you something like this. It flips the direction. But scalar multiplication is easy to do when it comes to uh, algebraic forms because you just times each of the component by that quantity, but it has a geometric consequence. Scalar multiplication stretches or compresses the vector, but it's easy to do algebraically. Okay, um, some other things I should mention that the zero vector, uh, this is just a point in space, right? The zero vector is, it has the algebraic form zero, zero. Uh, notice if you add the zero vector to any other vector, it won't change that vector because the zero vector is in fact the additive identity of vector addition. Well, what about the additive inverses of vector addition? How do you do vector of subtraction? Well, if you have V equals A comma B, the negative V is just going to equal negative A times negative B because this is just negative 1 times v. Like we said on the previous slide, times v by negative flips it in the opposite direction. And so algebraically, we can very easily capture this idea of additive inverses. All right? Well, let's do some slightly more complicated calculations. Take u this time to be 5 and negative 3, and take v to be negative 6 and 4. How would you compute u plus v. Well, I don't have to worry about a parallelogram diagram or anything like that. If I want to do u plus v, all I have to do is just add together the corresponding components, horizontal with horizontal, vertical with vertical, like so. And so we get 5 minus 6, which is negative 1, and we get negative 3 plus 4, which is positive 1. So the sum of the two vectors is negative 1, 1. No diagram necessary, no geometry if it's in algebraic form. Well, what about this one right here? 4u minus 5v. What if we throw some scalars into the sum as well? Uh, this object right here is commonly referred to as a linear combination. A linear combination meaning that we take some scalar multiple of the one vector plus some scalar multiple of the other vector, which admittedly u plus v is a, scal is a, is a linear combination because your scalars are just one in that situation. But this is sort of like the most general way of combining two vectors together. You can scale them and you can add them or in this case, subtract them. But the calculation is no more difficult than what we've been doing previously in this algebraic form. You're going to get 4 times u, which remember u is 5 and negative 3. You're going to take negative 5 times v, which is negative 6 and 4. So do the scalar multiplication. So for the first one, you get 4 times 5, which is 20. And you get 4 times negative 3, which is negative 12. I want you to think of it as like when you have this vector, you can distribute the scalar onto each of the pieces. And then for the next one, you distribute the negative 5. You end up with negative 5 times negative 6, which is positive 30, and negative 5 times positive 4, which is negative 20. And now you add these things together. You're going to get 20 plus 30, which is equal to 50. And then you're going to get negative 12 plus negative 20, which is negative 32. And this would then be the linear combination, the combination 4u minus 5v. So vector algebra is super easy when you're in algebraic form. Adding and scaling vectors is a cinch. As long as we can convert from the trigonometric form to algebraic and back again, we can use the simpler algebraic form to help us solve problems related to vectors. And this idea of translation is a big deal, right? Trigonometry is sort of the native language of vectors, but the more efficient language is algebra. So if we can convert the vectors, we can make life so much easier with these vector applications.